أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد صدق الله العظيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Dear brothers and sisters and viewers and spectators Today I'm going to talk about one of the most virtuous chapter of Quran. This early Meccan chapter, this early Meccan surah sums up in a few terse words the unity of the Godhead, often professed but frequently mixed up in a popular mind with debasing superstitious. Dear brothers, there are too many virtues, sacred virtues of the surah that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, which actually indicates us to recite this surah as much as we can. And so we do also. But the reason of reciting of this surah is different. We actually often recite this surah, Surah Al-Ikhlas, or you can say Surah Al-Samad. There are many names of this surah which have been given by the companions and Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Surah Al-Samad, Surah Al-Ikhlas, these two names are quite popular. And this surah we often recite after every prayer, almost every rakat of every prayer. And we actually love it. But we love it for not a big reason. We love it because of its shortness. This surah is one of the smallest surah, one of the shortest surah in the Quran. And that's why we often recite it in prayers. But the reality of this surah is so high. We must love this surah because of its profound meaning. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدْ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدْ Allah introduced himself in this surah and introduced the concept of monotheism which is the most basic concept of Islam which we must believe otherwise we cannot be Muslim we cannot be true submitters and today I'm gonna talk about few of its virtues and then there are every single word every single word of the surah is actually a complete miracle and inshallah next week onwards I will talk about every single word and the meaning of the words Allah, As-Samad, and uh, then Lam Yalid wa Lam Yulad wa Lam Yakullahu Kufwan Ahad. These are the concepts which actually deny all other concept of uh, uh, shirk, association, idolatry of all other religions, civilizations, cultures. So today I'm just going to talk about the virtues of the surah. And the reason why Allah has revealed this surah, this chapter, this portion upon the hurt of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Actually, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked about the lineage of God, about the lineage of Allah, the legacy of Allah by the idolaters and associators, by mushrikeen of Makkah. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was commanded and revealed this complete portion, this complete surah to response to those enemies of Islam, to those 
who asked Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam about the lineage and the legacy of God of Allah. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam actually replied in those gracious words, as Allah said to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to say to the enemies, as He said, "Qul say, O Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who Allahu ahad, Allahu samad, lam yalid, wa lam yulad." Allah commanded, Say, O Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He is Allah, the one and only. That is the first concept. It, he is Allah, the one and only. And He is Allah, the eternal, absolute eternal. He begets not, nor He is begotten. And there is absolutely no one like unto Him. So these basic things about Allah talks about the monotheism and if we think deeply in those words we can easily conclude the meaning of the basic pillars of monotheism they are functions of monotheism basically there are three functions of monotheism number one is that we call uh, oneness in lordship or you can say at-tawheed fi rububiyah that is oneness at-tawheed fi uluhiyah that is oneness in lordship we must know allah as the one god who do who does everything in this world and out of this world without any partner without without any help of any partner he does not need any help of any one of the world or out of this world he is the only one who runs this world who created this world and who created all the universe all the stars galaxies and set and you can say all moon sun and this earth and what Allah has created in this earth and kept in this earth like ocean and uh, you can find there are uh, many verses virtuous verses which actually told us that we actually cannot count the bounties of Allah we actually cannot count the qualities of Allah we cannot count the attributions of Allah what Allah has created in this world like mountains like rivers like oceans like skies like all other things human being we can find find numerous miraculous things inside ourselves so these things actually tell us the oneness of Allah that Allah the God is one there is no one who can match him there is no one who is like him Allah is one and then there is the that's why Allah has introduced himself and commanded Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to tell the enemies the reality of God the concept of God the reality of Allah what Islam does believe and what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam does believe and what companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam do believe about Allah about the oneness of God about the concept of God and they also were actually believing in Allah as a supreme power but they made idolater they made uh, you know partners with Allah they made sculptures whom they were worshiping along with Allah and that's what something which can which actually separated the Muslims from the mushrikeen uh, in that era of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they were thinking that Islam also thinks about the concept of God like we think but the separation which was made by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in front of the enemies it are actually all about this surah when they asked Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam about the concept the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam responded and recited this surah and said Allah is the one and only the God is the one and only Allahu Samad, Allah is the eternal, absolute eternal, 
لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا احد he begets not nor he is begotten and there is absolutely no one who is like him so this was the introduction of this surah and then there are too many virtues about this surah and uh, as there was one of the companions of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam who used to lead the prayer and he used to read and recite this surah after every single raka and the people used to complain to him why do you recite this surah after every raka so he just uh, insist to keep reciting it to keep repeating it so they complained to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam about imam who was who used to recite surah al ikhlas after every single raka prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam told them just go and ask him why does he do that so they asked him why do you do that so he replied because i love the quality of ar rahman the attribution of ar rahman which is mentioned in this surah so they uh, come to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and told him about his answer so prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam told them just go and tell him that allah loves you because of your love to allah and you know that is something which actually must provoke us to love this surah because of the profound meaning of the chapter because of the profound meaning of this portion not just because of the smallness or shortness of this surah as that who was a companion of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he used to recite often recite almost after every prayer surah al ikhlas and prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam had given him a beautiful tiding that if you love the quality of ar rahman the sifat of ar rahman then accept the tiding that allah loves you because of your love to allah so if we love this surah and if we love allah and if we love the profound meaning of this surah maybe allah loves us love us more and more and that is a wonderful blessing for us and then there are too many more virtues about this surah as this is a cure also uh, for the illness and sickness and uh, if we, we want to seek cure if we want to seek cure by allah himself then we must recite this surah as prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam often recite this surah Uh, when he goes to sleep onto his bed so he used to recite this surah because allah has kept a cure uh, in this prestigious surah and then in this surah we can see with a naked eye that allah had absolutely condemned that he has children he has partners he has anything who can associate who can be associated with him absolutely denied and kandam so we must know that the meaning the profound meaning of this surah is all about the oneness of allah which is actually tawhid fil fil uluhiyah the oneness the monotheism in lordship allah is the only lord and that's why in one of the hadith of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us that, that this surah this portion is equivalent to the third of quran because it actually translate us to the one third of quran so we must keep all those profundity and all those virtues sacred virtues of the surah in our mind in our hearts and we must recite it we can recite it in salah also but not because of its smallness not because of its sharpness but because of its profound meaning because of its virtues which was narrated by prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and by the companions of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is sunnah we can uh, actually increase our love by reciting this surah as much as we can and that will surely going to help us in the day of judgment so that was the a mini introduction about this surah about the profundity of this surah about the 
virtuous meaning of this surah which was actually narrated by prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and next week onwards inshallah i will try to translate every single word and the beautiful and exemplary and miraculous meaning of allah and ahad and as-samad and the concept of lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakul lahu kufuwan ahad how allah denies all other religions civilizations and cultures who associate any partner with allah so for now that's enough wa akhiru da'wana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alamin